On the last video, we covered prompt engineering. In doing so, we briefly touched upon the concept of AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. On this episode, I want to dive deeper into the topic to understand if the AGI claims are overblown. If you recall, I started by explaining why GPT is bad at humor. Crap. 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 Mega crap. Looks like we found at least one career path that's not in danger of losing jobs to ChatGPT. The reason ChatGPT is bad at humor is the same reason it's bad at math. It doesn't truly understand these concepts. It only understands how to describe them. And GPT-4 will not fix this. In fact, I want to correct some bullshit claims made by the so-called AI experts on social media. They have been spreading misinformation about AGI. AGI stands for Artificial General Intelligence. It's an AI that can outperform humans on every task. It's an AI with true sentience. We're nowhere near AGI, and there are no sparks of AGI in GPT-4. GPT has no thoughts of its own, and it will not spontaneously become conscious in the next few months. Sam Altman himself admits that we need more than just a language model to reach full-blown AGI. Do you think it's possible that large language models really is the way we, we build AGI? I think it's part of the way. I think we need other super important things. A system that cannot go significantly add to the sum total of scientific knowledge we have access to, kind of discover, invent, whatever you want to call it, new fundamental science is not a super intelligence. And to do that really well, I think we will need to expand on the GPT paradigm in pretty important ways that we're still missing ideas for. But I don't know what those ideas are. We're trying to find them. We're going to have AGI within 18 months. And if you watched the uh, Sam Altman, Lex Friedman interview, Sam Altman refers to AGI several times, but the definition seems to change. Because early in the interview, he talks about like, oh, you know, you put someone in front of GPT-4 or chat GPT-4, and what's the first thing that they do when, when, and these are his words, when they interact with an AGI is they try and break it or tease it or whatever. And then later he says, oh, well, GPT-5, that's not even going to be AGI. So he keeps like equivocating and bouncing back and forth. About one week after GPT-4's public release, a team of Microsoft scientists published and released a paper highlighting that the AI system is showing, quote, sparks of human-level intelligence, or AGI. I have a lot of respect for the channel, but watching them cover AI is like watching a Michael Bay film. In the last Cold Fusion episode, they misquoted Microsoft researchers to make it sound like GPT-4 was already outperforming humans, when in reality, it was only outperforming ChatGPT, which we already knew. Combined with the episode before that, their coverage of GPT basically sounds like a conspiracy theory. According to them, Bing may already be sentient, and Microsoft just fired their entire AI ethics team because who needs ethics when you got AI? Now nothing can get in the way of their AI-powered world domination. While the seemingly magical understanding of context in GPT-4 may seem like early signs of AGI, in reality it can be explained through vector embedding. Basically, as we add more dimensions to the model, it is able to model more complex relationships. This is not AGI. We're just embedding more ways to compare objects into the language model. But that's a topic for another episode. The fact that GPT-4 passed the bar exam is often cited as evidence that we've almost reached AGI. The deceptively titled research paper by Microsoft that I just mentioned seems to add farther fuel to the fire. But let's actually try to understand why GPT-4 did so well on the bar exam. That might shed some light on what's happening. The multi-state bar exam consists of three parts. The MBE part is worth 50% of the grade and consists of 200 multiple choice questions. It lasts 6 hours. The essay portion of the exam is worth 30% of the grade and consists of 6 questions. It lasts 3 hours. 
The performance test portion of the exam is worth 20% and consists of two questions indicative of a typical task that would be done by a lawyer. It also lasts three hours. Before we go any further, we should understand that the speed of execution makes any sort of time constraints irrelevant for GPT-4. So in that sense, it is indeed superior to a human. But let's also dive into the parts themselves. The amount of readily available online exam prep data should make the first part of this test easy to breeze through. After all, it follows the same format as the SATs, the answers tend to be based on historical precedents, and if there is one thing these systems excel at, it's pattern matching. This is just sentiment analysis that AI has been doing for years, but with more dimensions. And if you haven't yet recognized it, what GPT-4 is doing here is the classification pattern I described in my last video. We're basically fetching information from historical precedents and then pattern match it to our current use case. Generative AI excels at this, and this is great news for both law and medicine, as long as there is a human in the loop to troubleshoot it. The multi-state essay portion of the exam consists of six essays. The team conducting this research admitted that focusing on the right detail is what makes these essays challenging. The team also explained how they simplified this task for GPT-4, by breaking down the question into simpler tasks, a tactic you may remember me talk about in my last video. The MPT portion of the exam asks the test taker to perform two typical lawyer tasks, 90 minutes each. On this particular exam, the two questions consist of drafting a memo identifying correct choice of law for a complex family matter and construct another memo focused on questions of criminal law and legal ethics. As with the MEE portion, the team admits to using similar approach of simplifying the question into its components to make it easier for GPT-4 to understand. But the fact that the research team manually broke down the task for GPT-4 doesn't get much attention. It's not sentient AI passing the exam, as the media would have you think. It's clever prompt engineering by the team conducting the research. The paper also acknowledges that GPT-4's ability to outdo previous language models on these written tasks has more to do with an increase of the size of its context window than anything else. If you dig deeper into this research, you'll realize it has more to do with techniques employed by the team rather than emergent intelligence within GPT-4. A language model in this case serves as a giant database of legal frameworks, just like GPT-4 powering Bing serves as a database of web pages indexed by Bing. This is what these language models excel at. This isn't magic. And this is most certainly not AGI.